Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. I'm Dennis Stewart. I am the uh, gallery coordinator for Ohio University Southern. And one of the things that, um, that I've always enjoyed about my job is getting to meet fellow artists, getting to know them, become friends, share ideas, uh, tell war stories. Uh, in the age of COVID, it's been a little different because usually I go to art openings or I visit a gallery um, or an opening or just go into a gallery or museum and, um, and look for talent. And um, with social distancing and, and quarantines, that hasn't been possible in the last couple of years. And I was fortunate enough to meet Mark online and Facebook. It turned out that we had some mutual friends that were artists and he and I started trading stuff back and forth. And I said, hey, let me look at your stuff. I didn't tell him I was uh, doing curatorial work, but he, he sent me a lot of images and I looked at them and shot back the next day. Hey, you wanna have a one person show? Thank so <laughs> that's, that's how we got to uh, know each other. and. I'm going to uh, turn this over to Mark and let him tell you a little bit about himself. Oh, thanks, Dennis. Yeah. Um, oh, gosh. You know, the thing that sticks out to me is that I taught here in 1987 and 1988 in the high school art room. And coming back this many years later after traveling all over, doing different jobs in Germany and just everywhere, um, is that I'm back here and there's this amazing campus and it has an art gallery. I, I, I can't believe it and, and I love it. It's a great art gallery. So um, I kind of think that there's some reason I'm here that, that somehow that Dennis and I met and, and that, that I'm here uh, because as Dennis was saying about COVID, you, you start to feel constricted, you know, you feel like you're not making headway. And that's always something that's like the one thing that drives me is, is to keep going and going and going until I just can't anymore. And um, this was just a fabulous offer. And um, I'm, I'm just really glad. And, and the one thing that's kind of cool too, is this came at the same time as uh, a group, uh, uh, my joining a group in, in Northern Virginia that's called Uniting Us, which is for um, all, vet, all kinds of veterans, any veterans who, who are uh, not, not only artists, but who are involved in any creative, creative activity that makes their life better. And I'm really enjoying being connected with them. Uh, of course, I'm sending my work up there and they're, they're doing the hanging and the installing and the scheduling shows and all that. And I'm really fortunate, but it's with the way the world is in many aspects, it's nice to have some positivity and being here and doing this is just great. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Mark, the, the first thing that um, I wanted to ask you about, and I think people watching <clears throat> might also wonder too what mixed media means. Oh, well, I, to me, mixed media is, okay, I have to start this way. Um, Cause I've taught classes for many years too. And I always tell my students this, I, I try to alleviate their fears about any kind of class they're taking. And that is that any mark you make, any significant meaning that you give to an object uh, could be could be a scrap of metal, you know, it, it could become a symbol for something else. And you can develop a kind of personal language that way. Um, of course, I'm influenced a lot by Picasso, Robert Rauschenberg, artists like this who, who felt the same way. And I was fortunate to have a teacher who was, was very involved in collage and mixed media and studied with some of the best artists in that genre in New York City in the 40s after he uh, um, was discharged after World War II. He stayed there and, and got his, his degrees, and that's who became my first teacher. Anyway, you can use, I mean, you can, the idea is to, is to create, to create an image or an object, or it could be words. I mean, you know, it's all of these things that you assign meaning to so that you get something out of it for you, that you're not so much performing for someone else, but you're trying to 
make sense out of life uh, through a visual in a visual way. Um, and in, in my case, it's it's included um, walking around streets looking for pieces of metal, looking for just little some whatever the shapes are. I get attracted to um, going through. Um, um, oh God, I, 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 my dad was a photographer as a kid, so I, I'm, I'm naturally inclined to love black and white photography. Um, I've dumpster dived. Is that the right? I've <laughs> dumpster, dumpster dived, dived. Yeah. Dumb, yeah, many times. And actually, when I had my studio in downtown Charleston, there was a bookstore. Taylor Books was right behind my bu the building I was staying in, working in. And they would throw out the old magazines. And I would just go out in the trash and get these brand new magazines, fashion magazines, music, whatever it was. And so I, I, I've got, I don't know if I've got thousands of photographs, but I, I've got close to that. And all of these things, it, it's this idea of it having some kind of personal connection. And the paints, it could be any kind of paints. The only, the only thing I would caution some students or people who might want to work this way is you have to learn about the paints, the qualities, what can enamel work with oil, can oil work with acrylic, you know, these kind of things where you, you can be disappointed if the mediums won't work together. And then some artists would, would like that. They would like to have a stance of that. Um, so, uh, and of course, text, you know, the, that, that text is a big one. Um, going back to Dada in, in, in uh, pre-World War II Germany, the, the Dada artists in Berlin, and all around Germany were, were making these anti-Nazi statements um, using text and images. And I got them in some trouble, of course. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, it's, it's free. I love freedom. And I love, I love the freedom of this, this work I do, or anyone does in mixed media. But I also encourage um, uh, a sort of um, knowing your materials. And, 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 well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Oh, I'm no, gonna, no, I'm gonna no, I am. I'm getting ahead of myself. Well, I, I was going to ask you. You had mentioned the uh, uh, picking up a scrap of metal, or oh, yeah. you know the, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. And one of the very first things that I uh, that drew me to your work was seeing a painting that had a level screw on the top mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There's some that use uh, yardsticks yeah. and rulers. So I was going yeah. to ask you about that aspect of assemblage? That's an easy one. Some of them are diff more difficult to explain, but the level is about balance. Mm -hmm. And I think in the stuff I've been doing since, uh, let's see, I, I had to leave my teaching job in March of 2020 when the campus closed for, for COVID. So I've done some COVID work since then. And I'm finding that Balance is so important in all of our lives. Everything we're trying to balance, even more than we did before. So in the work I'm doing, I may have a point of view in the work, but I added the balance as a way of giving everybody access to it and saying this could go either way. And that's pretty much it. And that's why I put the rubber stamp stars on there to kind of give it a, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, with all my years in the Navy and everything else, uh, stencil letters, stamps, you know, I love all stuff yeah and that's what those are for so in a broad way there's always some stuff that escapes you but that's that's that was the idea um i i was going to ask I, one of the things that i i had noticed right away is that uh your use of the flag the stars the stripes yeah. um also some some references to the military both in the image and um, and I wondered what, it, what kind of an influence that, that was on me. Yeah, this is funny. Um, well, first of all, I was never in combat, but I did have to do a couple of things where I might have had to, I'll just leave it, I'll just say that. I never had to fire at anybody, but um, I, and I was lucky for that, but uh, I grew up on these bases everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, from, from the, I was born in Walter Reed Army Hospital. <laughs> You know, I mean, you can't know. be much more no, military no. than that. No, no. And so uh, my dad was, he was, uh, Dennis and I were just talking about our fathers both being um, in the Army Air Corps in World War II. And um, 
I didn't get a chance to tell Dennis, but my dad was in bombers too. And his dad was a, was a, a belly gunner, if you don't mind me saying yeah, this, you yeah. know, in, a, in bombers. Um, so, you know, this whole idea of rivets and metal and stencil letters and grays and greens, all of this has always been my favorite stuff. And I, I, I don't, I tell you, I, I, there's so much, it's, it's weird. It's just, it, there's so many things about the objects, the helmets, the, I was on a ship for three and a half years. Um, I actually love the ship. I didn't love everything about it, but I love the metal. I love the stairs. I love the whole, boat. everywhere you went, there was a leap. I mean, I just, I, I just thought it was pretty cool. Um, now the flag, uh, oh, and I want to say too, one of the neat things, when I was a, a Boy Scout in Scotland, uh, our, our troop used surplus World War II equipment. So we had web gear, backpacks, uh, canteens, um, you name it. And, and, and now these things would be worth so much money because they were collected from the soldiers as they were going back home and they were putting these enormous crates. And we had one of these crates delivered uh, to our Boy Scout building um, and I'll never forget this. And then they just said, you know, guys, take take whatever you want. You know, we're going up to Ben Nevis and, you know, get your stuff. You know, and and we all look like these little tiny infantry soldiers. We were <laughs> 11, 12 years old, you know, with all this stuff on. We didn't have helmets, but it was just a cool thing. You know, it was just cool. Um, now, the flag, it, I've had various experiences with that, um, obviously. Um, but I also served, I also was a, an honor guard for six years um, as part of my duties in Charleston um, to go out and do military funerals. So I had to learn how to hold the flag and, and um, uh, you know, uh, that was one aspect which, which, was, which was pretty sad, but it, it kind of, it made me realize when I met all the family, there were so many grateful people that, that, you know, we were all in our dress uniforms and, you know, we actually tried to act military and shoot the guns right and all that. And we, we always did our best and the people appreciated it so much. And that flag just, it really is, or was, I mean, this was in the, um, oh, let's see, late seventies, early eighties when I was stationed out here. Um, it was a unifying factor, and I, I like to think it still is, and I, I just love it. I mean, it, it, it just symbolizes so many things for me, and, um, I, I, you know, I, somehow I, I like to try and make my work not so much about, maybe it comes from me, but I like to, I like to throw in the Americanness of it. Um, I learned a lot about that when I was in Germany, and I, I was working um, with German artists, and I showed with a couple of German galleries, and um, that was a big question with them too. So, you know, it's it's you know, and you can't. And I got it. I got to say, the the reference to the, the to Jasper Johns I, that he has an American a number of American flag paintings, and I just love them. I I just I just you know, that's a whole other story, and I, I lectured about it. And I won't bore you with it right now, but <laughs> yeah, you know, it's all just. Well, it it seems that I, I have an uncle who is a psychologist and his son is a psychologist, and they have often talked about um, the formative experiences. And for some people, it is that that experience is um, going to college. Um, some of it, it's going into the service. Yeah. Uh, some folks, it's actually a combination of both. Um, I know I, my background is a sculptor, and I guess I, I wondered about the physicality oh, yeah. um, of his work, the, the adding on of these nice tactile objects and, and industrial things. And um, my formative period was um, I had dropped out of college and I worked for three years in a factory where I got to use all kinds of tools and, and machinery and drove dump trucks. And, uh, so that was one half of my formative uh, period. And then the other half was when I went to undergraduate school and sort of accidentally um, became an art major, uh, which is a whole other story. But I was going to ask, are there other 
other artists you you mentioned a few already that that you would like to oh the ones that they influenced me my god it's got to be robert rochenberg mm -hmm. um it, 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 it's real i'll just i'll sort of precede it and, and say this that when i was at the university of charleston taking classes after hours when i i was still active duty navy but i got the the, the uh you know I, they paid for me to go so i got a degree while i was on active duty and my art teacher um first one who i who i was very scared of he just was this older guy like me now you know who he just kind of scared me but it turned out he was we, we were friends and up till you know when i basically visited him the last day of his life in hospice i mean it went that long and he was just the best influence in the world and he can he did that he had those kind of things um going sometimes but the younger teacher was a big Rauschenberg fan John Spann um uh I'm trying to think of was it it might have been John Chamberlain who was making the large yeah, car yeah, part yeah yeah, yeah yeah um this I love the physicality of those things and I but I but I also there was a big emphasis on brushstroke and design and I got a fantastic education at UC at University of Charleston uh, when they had an art department um, from those two teachers and an occasional adjunct, but a small like a small department like here, like yeah. I, I've yeah. pretty much always taught in. And um, I, I I just can't say enough about small programs like that. You know, they, anything you know, he was always willing to 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 try anything, to do anything. And, and he was really big on the whole idea of symbolism and, um, and, and also I gotta say this, not just symbolism, but shape. Like if you wanted something circular um, in my, some of my work here, maybe, well, there's one piece over there, but it, it, there were many more, but this is the one I have um, that has 45 records and um, they're circular, but when you try to drill holes through them to, uh, <laughs> you know to get to get to attach them to the painting they start to crack but then you're like oh this is kind of cool these yeah. are cracking you know now i don't want to crack this far i don't want to crack that far and then you can compare and contrast it with a, a rubber ring you found in a great big um like um fedex truck parking lot those are great places to walk around and find small pieces and you know um and it's kind of magical and and i i was trying to explain this to a csx guy about two years ago as he was threatening to arrest me for being too close to the tracks. But there's so many, huh, I know that's a terrible thing to say, but I mean, there are so many great things out around the edge. I don't walk on the tracks, but out around the edge, but it's kind of a treasure hunt, but then mm -hmm. you turn it into to art. And um, can I just make get one more example? Yeah, yeah. Go, go. okay. One day I was in a little a ghost town in Southern West Virginia called Punamon. And um, there had been a flood, so this this area that had been a town and had had trains still there, but you know it was just basically. I, I probably shouldn't have been there, but there were no signs. But I got the feeling. But anyway, I made it real quick, and I went around. And I picked up all the metal and all the plastic and everything else I could find that was broken and had washed in from the river, and I made a piece of work um, that that was just a, like just a construction assemblage, you know, of all these pieces. And later on, um, a, a record, uh, how do you call it? It's like a, ho um, it's kind of a hotel, but it's kind of a, a luxury place. Um, it's, it's, it's in Fayetteville. Anyway, it's called Lafayette Flats. And they have a huge art collection there. And they got that piece because they call one of their rooms Quinamon. Each one of the rooms is named for something in that area that makes sense to that area. So in that, in, see what I mean about the magic? It's just kind of neat. So, you know, I gave it to him. I'm like, man, you guys should have this. And um, I don't know, it kind of, that just makes life happy for me. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's just, I'm like, I was, <laughs> you know, it's nice to do something that's just not, you know, the same mundane, the same, 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 same. So did I, I think I ran out of No, I don't <laughs> think I ran out of it. It's interesting. Um, I I wondered, and I, and I think a lot of people who look at any anybody's art might wonder, um, how do you begin? Does it begin with an idea first? Do you some people draw a sketch. Um, I uh, some yeah some people. How do you do it? 
how do I do it? Yeah. Um, sometimes it starts with a simple idea. And um, I find as I work, that idea evolves. Uh, of course, yeah. And uh, as I'm doing it, I'll say, you know, the next one I do, I'm going to do this. Oh, uh, the next one. Yeah. 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 You're yeah. Always thinking so ahead. I know sometimes too. while you're mm -hmm. in your studio working on one thing, several other things evolve oh, uh, from absolutely. it. Absolutely. And, and the other thing, I guess, with me is, I never, we, we talked about um, Willem de Kooning, oh, Painting Kooning. Woman One, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is a very famous abstract uh, expressionist painting. And he had been painting on it for over a year. I think it might have even been two years. It's hard to say with him. Yeah, he, yeah, he was, he was him, yeah, obsessive sure. yeah. until one day um, a friend by the name of Clement Green, Greenberg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. walked in, picked the painting up off the easel and said, Bill, you're done. Uh, but I will often go back and revisit, yeah. Yeah. revisit a piece and expand. Because I'm 3D, I can do this. I can, I can expand it. I can oh, make it sure. larger. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I, you know, sometimes it starts with a, a symbol. Sometimes I start first with the title. Yeah and ask myself, what does that title mean and how do I express it? I can totally relate. I mean, that's yeah. basically what I do too, except I'm doing it with the stuff that's around me, you know, mm -hmm. driving in a car or get an idea or reacting to the world or, or reacting to a memory or whatever it is. And then just start with me, it's just mm -hmm. papers, 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 and then boxes of ephemera from antique stores and all that kind of stuff. And I would love, you know, for me, and I'm, I know you're the same way, got to be, because, but you, you don't want to tell somebody what it is, you know, you want to give them a chance to experience, experience it for themselves. So sometimes you leave it a little more broad than you might, you know, instead of an illustration, there's a difference between illustration and fine art, I yeah. think. So yeah. that's where that comes in. They can cross, but that's, I like to let viewers in too. June Kilgore, a lot of people know who she was. She always said that. She said, just leave room for your viewers to enjoy themselves. Yeah. So, you know, don't want to hit anybody over the head. So it's just, well, that's probably a good thing, too. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people expect when they look at a painting or a piece of sculpture or print yeah. that it tells a story. And really what I think an artist is doing is sharing an experience, uh, sharing an emotion. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, it, it's not, it does not always have that linear kind of literary format. Absolutely. We have to do it, we have to do it pretty much all at one time. Can I, I'll tell you, I, I, I'm sorry that the viewers can't see this painting, but that one over there with Marilyn Monroe and the, the cheese cutting board. Now, this is really personal. I'm just going to tell you because life is life. But I did that right after Eric Clapton's son died. Mm -hmm. Remember way back his son fell off the patio? I mean, I just I, I just broke my heart. I couldn't imagine what someone would feel like, you know, with that. So I worked on that piece and I started putting all this together, which each one of those has its own tragedy. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But I couldn't. It wasn't ringing true. It felt like an illustration. It felt like it just, it wasn't brave enough, if that's the word. So that cheese cutting board, my mother used to hit me with that over the head all the time. <laughs> it was a period when kids were, you know, we were, we were corrected with physical. Uh, <laughs> physically. Physically, yeah. constantly, right. And of course I had a brother. So sometimes when the two of us were out of line, which was, you know, that's we were brothers, we were in the house, we probably drove her crazy. Um, she would hit that with me, hit me with that or throw it at me, but it has a history for me that's really deep. And, and I decided I didn't want, to, didn't want it around anymore. So I thought about, I put it on here because I thought, you know, we need to value our kids. You know, we need to treat them better. And I'm not boohooing here. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you look at a guy like, it could be Clapton, it could be anybody who loses their child. There's no more chances to go back. There, there's no more, 
you don't have it's over you know so when i put that on there i decided i was never going to sell it it would just be one of those i kept around or kept actually this has been in the basement for a really really long time um because some things you don't always want to recall yeah. but but making it and dealing with that issue to me is what makes some of the ones that may seem more fun or more illustrative um it balances it out yeah and, and and i get to be the artist so to speak where i get to deal with emotional stuff if that if yeah that. yeah um so i did i guess i did ask you which comes first but what about yeah. composing how do you know uh, uh, your pieces are very intricate so yeah. how do you begin um it's not a sketch or is it a sketch no never um first thing i learned in school from that great teacher of mine was don't center things mm -hmm. unless you have a specific reason to center mm -hmm. so i always start i usually start by some kind of scrap of paper going on this is in fact when i got my mfa at wvu it took me two years of intense work to answer that question because mm -hmm. you know they they always they're always ask 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 God, constantly 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 on you why are you doing this why are you doing this why are you doing this and you know I finally just realized that I don't enter an artwork through a pencil or a brush or anything like that I enter it through an image glued onto something it's that simple but but it's so simple that sometimes you can't you don't even realize what you're doing so that's basically it. I, I may choose a medium like like canvas or, or the or the, the I love that printmaking paper. I love to paint on our uh, Reeves BFK or or wood or canvas. But I always start wherever I start. I off center it and I glue it down. Then I work mm -hmm. from there. And then oh, yeah. it can take it can take months to finish one, or it can take you know two or three weeks. So uh, <clears throat> like the one that one with all the state of West Virginia symbols going through it. Um, that started from an invitation at the Huntington Museum. They asked me to do a piece um, about the experience of a, of a college educator working and living in West Virginia. And they did an invitational for the sesquicentennial. Um, and they got, I think it was 18 uh, professors or whatever to, uh, to um, do a piece. Mm -hmm. I ended up, and then right after that, the Concord University their gallery asked me, they said, we need, you know, we need you to do a faculty show. I was full time at that point. And so I ended up doing 18 more of those. <laughs> oh my God. But, uh, you know, it, it was a series, it, you know, as, as a one person show in that respect, as, especially as an educator, it felt like I had to be able to show some endurance and some, some, uh, hmm, some development of the idea, development of the different designs. And um, I think I've got three of those left now, something like that. A lot of them I just give to people, you know. If I charged them for it, I, they would, I wouldn't be able to have, let them have it. So I just give it to them. And uh, anyway, so uh, I think, uh, yeah, and they, uh, you know, and then sometimes there's the add ons, you know, the, um, I got into using the yardsticks. That's just might be something interesting to people. Um, as COVID went on and as the weeks and months went by, sort of staying in the house, you know, except for the occasional drive to Kroger's. Um, I began thinking about time and how we measure time. And then I thought, God, you know, measuring, what do you measure with? What do you measure? So I got on eBay and I started looking at antiques and I started seeing the coolest rulers, the yardsticks mm -hmm. and the, you know, like, like what's that one? It says, um, a, oh, here it is. Let me put my glasses on. That one says, um, a perfectly beautiful year, <laughs> which, which it wasn't, you know, so I cut that out and put that, you know, and then glued that to the to the level. So that they begin a different kind of uh, process there. Um, anyway, uh, I've got a million uh, yardsticks now, and I don't know if I'll <laughs> keep doing those or not. I, I collect them too. And I have no I idea what I'm going to do. Oh, I love those. Uh, um, I told Mark that he would love to see my studio because it's yeah. packed to the rafters of things that my wife says, "Why did you drag that home?" <laughs> And uh, I've dragged things around. We've been married 43 years, 42 wow, years. Yeah. And I've been dragging a few things around, not her, but they're dragging a few things around for that long. And then all of a sudden I'll have an idea and I'll say, yeah, I know what I need for that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, 
But doesn't that, isn't that, see, to me, and that's a, that's great. But mm-hmm. you know what? To me, that is, is a very enriching thing in someone's life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It doesn't it kind of just, it's kind of like magical, yeah. you know, and how much magic do we really get in, you know, and, and I don't think I, I, I don't think I would have done I don't, I, anything but what I'm doing, you know, I, I mean, I, I knew even back when I made the decision, I was offered a, 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 a slot at officer candidate school for the Navy, and I just knew I wanted to be a teacher. And I mm-hmm. wanted to make mm-hmm. art. And I thought life is so short. I'd already seen a lot of people pass away. And I thought, God, I, you know, that would be so cool too. But, uh, you know, so as bad as things can get in your life, being able to do a creative thing is, is such a, such a relief for me. Yeah. And I get the feeling yeah. you might feel the same way. Get your mind off things and, you know, you, you just go to a different place. You know? Well, they have that thing that they call flow time that they say certain people experience. And, and I think a lot of folks uh, once in a while in one way or another experience it. But um, I've heard athletes and I've heard surgeons mm-hmm. uh, who have all said that you become so engrossed in what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I remember times I'd gone into the studio at, at five in the afternoon mm-hmm. and I'm working away and working away and I thought oh you know I probably should go up go in and eat dinner and <laughs> uh, I get to the house and it's one o'clock in the oh, morning oh, yeah so yeah. It, you become so involved that that time kind of changes for you it does it it it's I'm not sure what the word is but it's it's flow time it, that's flow to oh flow time yeah. Oh, but, but yeah, it, it's your, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I, it, anyway, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. When, it, when it works. It's cool. Yeah, when it, well, yeah, I'm always trying to keep like my wife and my dog and, you know, those, those living beings, you know, in mind. Out of your space. So that, no, oh, no, I was going to oh, say. Oh. No, I love it. It's funny. You have to do that when you're working. Yeah. Yeah. No, my dog always comes in. And so, but she, but no, what I was going to say is, you know, try to, it's, there's this balance of, of, of I think, trying to, to be good to everybody, you know, mm-hmm. trying to, trying to be attentive to, you know, um, because I think, I mean, look at Van Gogh, look what he did. He yeah. was on his own, but God, think of what that cost him, yeah. you know, to yeah. be on his own like that. It's just, I, my heart breaks for that guy. It, it, it ew, that's a whole other, you know, yeah. I'm, wow, you know, yeah, it's kind of sad. Um, I, one of the things that I, I wanted to, uh, that, I, that I noticed and that I wanted to ask you about is a lot of the pieces are very intricate. There's a lot of, a whole lot of detail mm-hmm. uh, um, in them. And again, how, how do you keep it from becoming confusing? Because I don't find them confusing at all. It's a balancing act, really. You know, you, it's, it gets more difficult as they go along because then you, you can overdo it. Yeah. Yeah. And those usually end up in a trash can. But because once you overdo it, you realize if you're having a hard time dealing with it, so would a viewer. And you don't want yeah. a viewer yeah. to, to have to struggle. You know, and I try, I try, keep that in mind. Um, and, and a lot, of course, in, in this show, there's pieces I did in 2000. And there's ones I did uh, well this year. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a consistency to them, but there's a difference in approach. Um, because sometimes you just get interested in something and you want to push yourself mm-hmm. and see how far you can take something else, you know? And then usually when I get to the end of that, maybe years later, it comes back in the form of something else that I go, oh, that's like what I did back in 88. Like right now on Facebook, you know, I, I'm posting all these old pieces. And, and that's because I finally found a guy who's, who's scanning them for me. He's doing a great job that I'm kind of tweaking them um, a little bit um, and just putting them up there because, because I mean, it's, I mean, otherwise they'd never be seen again. And I'm I'm getting a lot of nice remarks about them, but and or some things I say, yeah, but remember that was that was 30 years ago. Yeah. To me, it doesn't seem like that. But and and it's all 
it's all life is so short, you know, it's just does that does 30 years really even make a difference in your creative stuff? I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think it does. I'm, I'm surprised that when you told me that some of those were, were older pieces oh, yeah. or when you posted them online and I've seen the date. Yeah. But, oh, you could have done that yesterday. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? And that's part of why I'm going back and looking at it because it's kind of surprising me because I've got this book that's, I've, I've probably got seven or 800 slides in there. It could be. And, and I, I won't show them all because some of them are smaller works. Some of them were works that I realized in the end um, led to a larger piece that I already showed. And I'm like, no, nah, you know, there's no reason to overdo it. I probably, you know, they, they think I'm overdoing it. But um, I think sometimes in this society and stuff, we kind of, you know, it's got to be new, 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 new. What are you doing now? What are you doing now? And, or shows, you know, you got to do it in the last two years. You know, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. And um, and I kind of understand that it kind of it kind of makes artists get busy and 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 work on their their stuff, um, but I think it's as a mistake maybe to to devalue what you did before that. Yes, like it's like it's oh well, I can't show this, so you know whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like it doesn't to... it doesn't have an expiration date on it. It shouldn't. Not no. really. No, no. You know. How many pieces have you produced over the years? Oh, okay. you have. I mean, do you, oh. and where do you keep them all? <laughs> oh, they're gone. I mean, I, I only, I have the ones that are in this gallery, which is about, which, there's about 30 here. And I, ha I probably have another 20 in the basement and on the walls at home. But I would say there's, there's hundreds out there. Um, and, and people, you know, they, people, <laughs> sometimes people catch me <laughs> at the right moment. Um, when I when I got my MA at Marshall, I was always always needed money, and um, I sometimes I'd be walking down the hall and somebody would say, "What do you what do you take for that?" And I'll go, "Well, my electric bill is seventy five thirty five, you know, seventy five thirty five, and they write a check, and 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 I would sell it like that. I've shown in really good galleries. I've shown uh, all kinds of places, um, but I'd much and I give away a lot. Oh Lord, I've given away. A lot of them, um, because that's They're very, you know, very unique pieces and um, very eye-catching. I I really enjoyed looking at your artwork, but okay. I love Americana everything. So yeah. I guess that's probably why. Oh, I do. Yeah, I mean, I just do. I do too, and I I just, you know, it's funny. I I I really wasn't doing this that much until I was. I I got a job in Germany as an arts and crafts director. Um, in 1987, 87, yeah, no, yeah, 87, um, and I ended up, yeah, 87, sorry, I'm trying to get this all together here, and I was, I, I actually was still making things in the shop, it was a fantastic place, I won't go into the whole thing, but I was some great people to work with, and I learned a lot about, you know, craftsmanship and woodwork, and um, anyway, uh, I went out and, and went to the German gallery of the younger German artists that, that were in the town. It was called Gießen. And I, um, I went in there to ask about doing a show and they, they didn't talk to me for a couple hours. They, I just, and I decided, you know, I'm in their country and stuff. I'm just going to sit in this chair in the gallery and just kind of watch what's going on. And, um, a little sooner or later, this guy walked over to me, uh, Great big guy, looked like a Viking. He was a real tall guy, <laughs> long hair, really nice guy, Ugo. And he said, you know, what are you doing here? What what are you what are you doing? I said, well, I'm interested in being, a, you know, having a show. And he said, well, we don't really want to show to America, have Americans in here, but you look like you might be a Canadian, maybe. And I, I said, <laughs> no, no, I'm an American. And he's like, no way, you know. But they were used to all the Americans there, but you know, having real short hair and being in the army. And I said, no, no, I'm, you know, I told him my story. And they said, well, I, we don't know, you know. So I stayed there two more hours. And when I left, I had a show lined up. So I learned so much from them about what they thought of Americans, what, um, how, how much my Americanness really was different than what I had actually thought it would be. Um, and, and they were different too. I, you know, most of my experience with German art at that point had been art in America, art news. Right. Um, and um, anyway, long story short, uh, 
I began thinking of myself more as an American artist than just an artist. If that and just an artist isn't fair to say, but I, I putting a national a sense of nationalism to it has kind of stuck with me. It it, it just feels like a comfortable thing, and um, I think I'm talking about us as Americans and the country and almost everything I do now. You yeah. know, it just yeah. just kind of permeates it. Yeah, thank you for saying that. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I, I find more, I, I wanted to say to it, to Mark, that uh, the more I look at his work, I, I'm constantly surprised that I'm finding something new, something that I haven't seen before. And I, you know, I would recommend to anybody who is a viewer of this or any other show is that you have to spend time with the piece. Mm -hmm. Some people walk up to a piece. Uh, I think I read somewhere four seconds is the average for people viewing a work of art. And um, you need to give it more of a chance. It is an experience. It's an experience that, um, that the artist is trying to share with you. you. He brings his experiences, but you bring yours too. And it's an opportunity for you to... Uh, to share those experiences. Yeah. We have about 20 minutes um, till we're at the top of the hour. Do we want to maybe open it up for some questions from oh, yeah. some of our audience? Sure. Yeah, that's, that's a great idea. idea. Yeah. Okay. I don't know that this is going to come out as a question um, because I think the question that I had early on, uh, Dennis asked and it was answered. Um, I recently, like over the summer, started doing collage myself, which when I saw your artwork in the gallery, I was just really excited because it's not a tip. I mean, tons of people do collage, but it's not a typical thing that I would just expect to walk into a gallery and see. Um, so I was just, you know, really you know admire what you're doing and it's beautiful um especially to see like the, the multi-dimensional aspects like the metal pieces added on which is really cool um but also what you said kind of made me feel better about my my own uh habits because i feel like sometimes finding the material is just as enjoyable as then going and making something <laughs> So if you're like me, I have just more stuff that I could ever make into art at this point, but it's I really kind of enjoy like, it. It's like an Easter egg hunt when you were a kid for me. Yeah. Kind of like that. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe I, we I, artists should yeah. have a swap meet where we don't buy stuff, but we just get together and say, what would you take for that bend up car bender? <laughs> you know? How oh, about yeah. those oh, three yeah. old books and the broken lamp? You know, so, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, we should do that sometime. I'm a hoarder, oh, and yeah. seeing some of Mark's stuff, I thought I have a bunch of books that I'm going to take some pages out of and and give to him um, because uh, maybe I'll come back in two or three years and I'll see a little scrap of it somewhere. Um, I'm sure that he can do a better job with oh, than I can. So. God, no. I get, do you want me to throw in a little? This is really kind of a funny story about finding stuff, but I was doing a piece on, um, and I love what you said, and I would encourage you to keep going out, but, but you have to be careful. That's why I'm saying this. Um, I did a piece for the Clay Center uh, in Charleston that, that uh, long story short, but it, 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 it's a long, it's a big, big piece. I built a deck and it has it's real structural it's it's too big to move around it's still in my basement but it's, anyway I, I had a wagon like you you know like a, what is the red red the what red, the, uh red flyer yeah one of those right and i had yeah and i and i was equipping it with a bunch of equipment like you would take through your life uh anyway so i i was in a surplus store bought a whole bunch of uh east german uh pouches and stuff they would wear you know mm -hmm. in their in their equipment and I just threw them in the washer because I feel like I, I wash all this stuff, you know, whether whatever it is with Clorox, I always wash stuff off. And I was, uh, I was, I threw all this stuff in, I threw it in the dryer and I started, <laughs> come on, help me. You know? <laughs> I started hearing this clanging sound and I'm like, 
my wife's like, what is that? And I said, I don't know, man, I better find out, you know? So I opened the dryer and it turns out there was an AK-47 oh <laughs> which I don't know if it could go off with the heat or not, but it probably needs to be struck like with a hammer. You, you know, mean like trigger. bouncing around on yeah, the yeah, inside of the yeah, dryer? Yeah, yeah. And it was, in the, you know, it was like, oh my God, you know, I would have, and, and so you would never think that you would have a live round of ammunition that you would bring home to work for an artwork, you know, just saying. So, you know, be careful, you know. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Anyway, I, are you showing your work yet anywhere? Can she still hear me? Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, I had to unmute This is my myself. first Zoom call, I don't know, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, I haven't done like a gallery show, but I've done like, um, I did my first like art festival show, um, I guess it was in Oct September or October. Yeah. Um, other than that, I just have an Instagram account for it and just kind of show it that way. Okay. Oh, yeah, but that's that's good. Yeah. Where? Um, what show was it? The localization uh, art festival in Huntington. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah, there's some great art art going on in Huntington. Mm -hmm. yeah. there, there's a great show. I used to work at the Southern Ohio Museum, so I'm going to give them a plug, yeah. but um, they have a biennial uh, exhibit called Cream of the Crop. And uh, if you Google Southern Ohio Museum, they should be having one coming up. I think they'll put the call out probably May, um, but it's yeah. something they do every two years. Uh, I've been in the show and thought it was great, and I helped run the show and thought it was great. Yeah. I've been in a lot of shows, um, and I don't think anybody does it better than they do. Yeah, I was in one, and it was awesome. I yeah. Mean, way yeah. long, long time ago. And yeah, it's a great resource, isn't it? It's a great yeah. place. It is. And it's a good place to meet other artists. Yeah. That's, that's really good to build some sense of community. And I would say that what you should do is find, if you can, some like-minded people, either online or uh, in person, or if I'm down here sometime, uh, bring a piece down for me to look at. Um, I, I learned from other artists. I, I learned from Mark. Oh, thanks. Um, you know, I, I've looked at some, just not just compositionally uh, and the particular images, but uh, it's, you know, I'd like to do something kind of like right there in the corner of that painting. Yeah. I like the way those three colors come together. And uh, you carry that with you. You know, it, it helps inform you. Yeah. I've, you know, there is a huge collage uh, artist um, community online right now, um, especially oh. on Instagram. And it's been really fun to, to see like-minded artists who, who right. use, like, like for me, for example, I, I use old magazines, um, yeah. old advertisements, National Geographics, things like that. And a lot of other people are also using advertisements in National Geographics yeah. mid-century. So yeah. I, I may see something that I've made before, like an element that I've used somehow completely differently. And then they've done something with it that's just like, oh, I never would have thought of that. And it's just been really cool to see that. Now, yeah. you say that you're using images from um, uh, different sources. Mm -hmm. Do you cut and apply directly, or have you ever tried tr what they call image transfer? It's just been cut, cut and paste. Okay. I would encourage you to look up online image transfer, because I think it's another, uh, another way that you would enjoy doing it. Oh, yeah. If you have a printer at home, or if nobody's looking at work, you slip some stuff in the printer and yeah. take it home. And you can, um, one of the ways that you can do an image transfer is um, uh, take that, that image, uh, whether it is uh, inkjet or laser, and there are ways then that you can lay it face down on a piece of clean paper. I mean, you know, it might be on some of that cheap like out of the newspaper and you can put it on a really nice uh, piece of cotton rag uh, paper and, and you rub it and it has a special quality 
you know, that that rubbing, that stroke, it's almost like the painter's oh, stroke. Yeah. You yeah. know, you might want to transfer the yeah. whole image or yeah. you want to make it sort of kind of sketchy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd encourage you to do that. I'll look into that. Thank you for yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I sit here, I think about this room down the hall, and I just think, I'm like, I'll come back over and do a workshop. I'll show anybody what they want to <laughs> see. I'll show them how I do this stuff. You know, it's just, it's just, it kills you when you're looking at that room, and it's just, you think, God, what, it's so sad. So many art departments are closing, and it, it's, it, it's, it's uh, like someone for you, you know, I, you could do something in, in, a, in an afternoon, mm -hmm. and you could influence mm -hmm. five, six, seven, ten people, and just, yeah. anyway. I keep going. And do you know about the National Collage Society? Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a signature member. <laughs> oh. I'm a big shot. Yeah, no, I've been doing it. I, I, I've been with them and with different shows since the 90s. And but the thing I was going to see, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that the quality of the shows is always really good. And you can just you can go right to their site and look at all the artwork from all these shows. And there's great stuff on there. That's a, that's a, and there, that, that's, I mean, that, that is a great resource. That's a great resource. And you can enter the shows. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Gonna, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, you know, I've been kicked out of some of the best shows and I've been in a few of the really good ones. You know, you know how it is. That's the whole thing. You never know what's going to happen. The jurors are different. You never, you can't get your feelings hurt. No. Yeah. You have to have a rhino's hide. Yeah. And you, you have, uh, boy, I just read a quote the other night about failure. Um, you know, basically, if you don't fail once in a while, you're not learning anything new. Oh, boy, that's and, and so who was it that said, fell one, fall once, get up, fall again, get up, fall uh, again? Was it Thomas Merton? I, I was... I, I was they, gonna say it might be like Churchill, you know, uh, never, <laughs> never, never quit. But I know yeah. it's not, but yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. I, I've seen that. One of our viewers says Samuel Beckett. It Beckett. Beckett. Okay. Hey, hey, all right. <laughs> cool. yeah. I said Thomas Beckett. Right. Thank you, Barb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Um anyway, you know, and I was gonna say it, it is really it's tough to do shows sometimes, you know, but they 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 help you. They, they mm -hmm. help you get to see the other people's work and you have a sense of moving forward. Um, and I, I, I tell you, you know, I, I, you talk about, fall, yeah, I get to that point sometimes. I'm like, I'm done. And then, you know, mm -hmm. right back at it again. Yeah. You know, just stuff just, it's, you know, and, and here's another thing too. I, I, I really, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you talked about failure and falling and all that. Cause I want to say, I don't, you know, I don't look at, I don't think of myself as special or anything like that. I just look at myself as, as a person who chose to pursue a creative life and to try to make a living as a treat, as a teacher. And I've made a living as a curator and a designer and all kinds of things. Um, and so it can be done, but everybody has this in, you know what I mean? Yeah, everybody yeah. Everybody has this, and I, I did some volunteer classes at the VA in Huntington, with, and I loved it, and, and it was just, you know, it was just, I, I just, I can't say it was such a different experience than working with college students, which I loved as well, I still do, but when you see people kind of light up when they do something, and they look at it, and they go, I can't believe I did that. Yeah. I did that. I can't do that. I'm not an artist. And how many times have we heard that? We're all artists. We're all creative. I mean, think creativity comes in all kinds of forms. This is just one of them. And, and I'm thrilled that I was asked to come over here and put these up because a lot of these haven't seen a wall in a long time, except in our dining room, in the living room. But, um, but a lot of them <laughs> do live in the basement, you know. But it's not so much what happens to them; it's what you went through when you were making them. Don't you think? That's yeah. what it's really yeah. about: is your own growth. You it's know? sort of like um, for some people, a scrapbook. Like going back, all oh, that's when the, when the kids are little. I'm I'm at that stage of life now where I get tears in my eyes when I look at my kids as as little ones. You know, we I just uncovered. Uh, a picture of my son the other day, my oldest born, with uh, with his puppy, with his pacifier in his mouth, 
And um, so your artwork is sometimes kind of a scrapbook of your life. Oh, you yeah. Look yeah. back and remember what you were doing then. It is. And you know what's funny? I have a friend. She was in my first class. I taught at UC in 1984. We've been friends ever since. And there's a painting that's on its way back from D.C. It was in, at Arlington National Cemetery this, uh, for, for the 9-11 um, Veterans Day show at the Military Women's Museum there at the entrance to, to the cemetery. And I'm, I, I told her, I said, OK, look, I still want to have this piece with me. But when I die, you get it. And I'm starting to look at who who's going to get what, you know, mm -hmm. because certain people would I'd love to have that. I'm like, well, I still like having it around, but you'll have it. So it's 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 kind of a new phase where I'm I'm thinking, well, all right, so and so is going to get this one, so and so is going to get that one, and it, it leaves you feeling pretty good when somebody wants to take something like that and and live with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's a pretty cool feeling. Um, and she, her name's Terry. I mean, she's the first one um, who I've done that with, really. Um, but I think the value lies in the viewer, not so much in the piece. I mean, yeah, that probably is the reverse of what yeah. most people would say. But if everybody didn't love Van Gogh, would he be as famous? You know, he, he did something. He touched people in some way. So. Um, I think we're getting close, so I just wanted to throw that little bit of uh, philosophy. I just, there. I just wondered if there's anybody else out there that would like to ask a question before we go. No, it looks like a few names on there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to thank all of you for taking the time to uh, allow us to share Mark's work with you, and um, I look forward to the next show, which will be. Uh, D and Donna Russell. Uh, D is a sculptor um, who, like Mark and I, collects all kinds of stuff and puts it together and makes art. And his wife Donna is a photographer, and they have shown an awful lot in uh, in our region. So they're award-winning artists. That's great. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Huh. Everyone say thank you and they love your work and we appreciate you making the drive down from Charleston today and uh, maybe we'll see your work somewhere. Um, you know, local, I don't know, do you, do they still do the starving artists set up in Huntington or they sell their work or. If I was still starving, I might do that one. I know you're not starving, but <laughs> no, no, I you mean, know, we might I'm see you at a local that. show somewhere. Oh. And I'll say, hey, I, I know that guy. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's hard. It, thank you for that. I, you never. It's funny. You just never know where something could pop up or somebody might ask you to do a show or just like Dennis did. That was a complete surprise. Um, but thanks for saying that. I appreciate it. You can go to my Facebook page too if you want to look at anything. Okay. It's open, so it's just Mark Tobin Moore at Facebook, and and I've got Instagram. Mark Tobin Moore is Instagram, and occasionally I put stuff on there. Not as much as Facebook, but um, it, it's. Uh, what can I say? I uh, thank you very much. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank yeah. you. It looks like we're about to. Oh, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. <laughs> all right.